I know with all the layoffs, it's been really hard to find a tech job lately, particularly for junior engineers trying to get that first job. So I've decided to go and talk to some hiring managers, I was a hiring manager myself, and get you some advice in how you can make yourself stand out from all of those folks looking to get that tech job. And the first person I'm going to talk to is Jem Young from Netflix. Let's get right into it. Hi, Jim. How are you today? Hey, Jack. I'm doing well. It's a little bit rainy here in Oakland, California, but other than that, it's a good start to the year. Nice. I used to live down in Union City. So, yeah, in the area. I got the 510 area code phone number. 510 represent. <laughs> Not too yeah. far. Not too far at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, yeah, my favorite part of town. Um, so, yeah, we're here to talk about junior engineers, and we asked some questions online about for junior, you're a hiring manager, and uh, I've been a hiring manager in the past, and I know folks in the you know, who are want to get that first junior engineering job are looking for some advice from people who are, have done it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got your first gig, and and just let's start the conversation. Yeah, absolutely, and thanks for having me on, Jack. Uh, huh? Yeah. Like you said, my my name is Jem Young. I'm an engineering manager at Netflix. Uh, I've been at Netflix about eight years, uh, just a little over eight years. Uh, I think Monday or something like that. So, hey, congrats! Uh, thank you. Yeah, it, nice. time flies. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I never would have thought that eight years ago I'd still still be here doing this and being a manager. Um, but yeah, like you said, part of my role is is being a hiring manager. Sometimes I hire for my team. Sometimes I help hire for other teams. So. I've talked to a lot of people, seen a lot of resumes, so I'm excited to, to have this episode. Good. Uh, yeah. A little bit too. about me. Oh, sorry. What's... No, no, no. Me. I'm excited as well. Yeah. <laughs> We're both excited. Uh, so a, a bit about me. Uh, I started in tech oh God, many years ago, many, many years ago. <laughs> you and um, me both. I, unlike a lot of people, I, I got my CS degree. I won't say unlike a lot of people. Um, because before I had my degree, I was always in the computers for a long time, mm -hmm. you know, as far yeah. back as I could remember since I was a, a young one programming on my TI 8083 in class, you know. Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> okay. Boredom. Boredom is the, the best. That was best a graphing calculator, though. You could do some cool stuff on that thing. You can. You like games and like really simple programs. Um, yeah. So I started with that, but I've always been in the computers. So without a doubt, it's, it's always been like the thing. Uh, and then when I learned that computer science was a field you can study and Ta -da. get into that. Yeah. That was what I did. I, there's no question. Um, but for a long time, I tried to get a software engineering job and I couldn't because I didn't have any software engineering experience. I didn't even know what it, coding was at a professional level. I was just a enthusiast, you know, tinkering on windows and the registry and like playing all that fun stuff. So what I ended up doing was going to school and getting my computer science degree which I thought, okay, once I get my degree, everybody's yeah. going to hire me. You're so, good. You're done. Yeah. Good. I've graduated. Uh, yeah, it turns out there's a big difference between theory and, and practice. <laughs> um, right. As anybody with a CS degree will, will tell you, uh, very, very big leap there. But what having a CS degree helped me was making connections. And turned out my roommate in college, who was also in the CS program with me, helped me get my first role as a yeah. software engineer who like vouched me. And, of course... As part of my first software engineering role at a small healthcare startup, uh, I had a lot of great mentors, and that's something really important in your first role is you got to have people to help you because you don't know what you're doing. It yeah. doesn't matter how good you are. You don't know what you're doing. All right. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Huge difference between tinkering code and production code, and then every environment's different, and every and, – and in healthcare, wow, there's a lot of – you know, there's a lot of HIPAA compliance. I don't know if HIPAA was a thing back then, but a lot of compliance for sure. Oh, I'm not that old, Jack. Yeah, HIPAA. HIPAA <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, I, I think as uh, an arrogant youth, I was like, I'm not going to write tests. Or why do I have to structure my code in this way? Like, ah, th that slows me down. And Because, you know, like you have to follow someone else's conventions. Yeah, exactly. And fortunately, I had people who had a lot of grace uh, with me and... It's like, no, here's how you do things. And then you wait a couple months and then you come back to that code and you're like, oh, okay, now I understand why we structured this code in a way because other people have to work on it and you have to come back to it and you have to understand what you wrote. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Which, you know, helps. That, that's the way you should write code. <laughs> yeah. You know, for readability and maintainability first, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so 
after my during my first job, I I got a lot of experience in terms of real world software engineering. That's where I picked up JavaScript because most mm. like you know I, I knew Java like most people going into school. It's the language they teach. Um, mm -hmm. We could talk about that maybe some other time <laughs> about the language to learn. Oh yeah, it's an interesting topic. Okay, sure. <laughs> But as as part of that, not only picking up JavaScript, uh, picking up UI for the first time and yeah. falling in love with building things for the front end, building things I can show my mom and my friends. Right. And, yeah. And things like that. Yeah. So satisfying. It really uh, is. Yeah. Versus it, it, like, hey, Jack, check out this Java service I built. You're like, cool. Whoa, that API really rocks. <laughs> I'm really loving your JSON schema. It's just rocking, man. That's great. Like, now I can show my mom. She's like, yeah, but, you know, I can't find continue playing. Like, that's my problem with Netflix, but that's a whole different idea. But, uh, yeah, okay. So you mentioned referrals. And I think, like, when I was thinking went back to my experience getting my first job, it was really just, you know, I, I, I got – I was in high school. I got a, a gig doing, like, Fortran work. And then I – met one, you know, the guy who was kind of running that was also working at the University of Miami. And so he was like, oh, cool. Let's talk to this other person. And eventually it was like kind of referral, referral, referral. And that was how I think my first five or six jobs actually went. And so what do you think if I'm if I'm somebody who how would I create those connections? Like what 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 could I do to build some connections and get that first job? Yeah, first uh, find a community. Hmm. any sort of community the the state of the internet now makes it much easier to find a meetup yeah. or a, a discord group or a slack group or whatever it is find that community find your your niche find your your people uh, that you vibe with and then start building up connections start making friends one thing i encourage people to do is always be genuine in your interactions don't just be oh jack yeah he works at that that tech company let me go befriend him because maybe he'll oh, give me a right. job something you know yeah I, I get a lot of that, especially on LinkedIn. Um, oh, right. Yeah. The first yeah. thing people are like, they, you know, they, they connect with you and then they're like immediately, like, how do I find a React job? Like, whoa, dude, I'm not a recruiter. Like, what? Hello. Hi. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've stopped accepting random requests. On yeah. LinkedIn. I hate to do I'm, get, it, but I'm getting there. Yeah. Hey, can I get a referral? I'm like, I, I, I don't, I don't know, you. know you. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I'm, Fine. So, so essentially, like when you make these connections to get referrals, you're essentially what a referral is is someone vouching for you, saying like, "Hey, yeah. I work with dude. this person, right? Yeah, yeah. or I yeah, met this person at a conference. Seemed like they knew what the heck they were doing, you know, or whatever. That sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. And the the fact is, there's uh, I think four and a half million software engineers in the United States. You know, give yeah. or take a couple hundred thousand. There's a lot of software engineers in the world how do you stand out from that crowd? And the big thing is like having people who know you and can vouch for your work versus like, Oh, I'm a, I'm a coder. Cool. Lots of people do that. That's, that's not original. Um, but it's like, no, this person's really good. Cause they're on the cutting edge. Uh, they know how to speak well. They know how to communicate well. And they're always excited about the latest thing. And they, they like to level people up. Like that's, that's the kind of referral you want. And that's the kind yeah. of, maybe not person, but cause that's the person you, know, you want on your team. Right. Exactly. Somebody who's, yeah, kind of come in with, you know, some new fresh ideas, but not try and force them on you, but be excited and enthusiastic about it. And yeah, exactly. The kind of person you want to work with. Exactly. All, all of the, the people I've hired directly on my team have been referrals from someone else at, at Netflix. Uh, and the last person I hired uh, just a few weeks ago was a referral from someone else on my team who had went to college together and they worked together. So nice. I, I know they, they hammered in and I feel like high school and college, they're like, you got a network, network, network. And you're like, ah, that's, that's for extroverts. I'm, I'm a heads down coder. People will know my work when they see my GitHub. Uh, but the fact is you, you have to network. That's, that's the easiest way to, to find a job. But that, I would say there is a value though, in that GitHub, you know, trail for sure. Certainly to demonstrate what, what your, where your passions are, where you're, you know, in innovation, in, in, where your thoughts around innovation, like, you know, trying new things, you know, if you pick up HTM, HTMX and you're like, okay, I'll just, you know, try it out and throw it into a repo and there you go, I'll show my HTML, whatever. Um, but also writing, I think, you know, there's so much opportunity out there to, to just take whatever notes you've created as you're like trying out something new and then just add a little, little bit of embellishment, throw it on a medium and now you've got an article that says, hey, this is how I set up TRPC on blah, 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 blah. And 
there you go. That's something it, if you're not an extrovert necessarily in terms of connecting with somebody, you can do that. You can, you know, exp- you can have another communications channel that demonstrates your your you know, interests. Uh, uh, fantastic advice, Jack. Yeah, that that's 100 percent the case. You don't have to be a public speaker, someone who has an excellent YouTube channel or anything like that find your way of, of giving back or communicating with other people. And that I, I hammer it home. Every time I talk to, to college students or whoever, I'm like, you have to be able to communicate. You have to, have to, have to be able to communicate. It's not enough to be a good coder. Uh, there was maybe a day for that when you could be like, Oh, that's, that's Jim. He sits in the corner. He comes back. Every couple months <laughs> right. He just cranks your cool code. Thing. Yeah. yeah. The, the systems are too complicated for that yeah. these days. And you have to be able to communicate in whatever medium you can, you can find. Uh, so yeah. I really like your advice there is, you know, start a blog or medium or Twitter, whatever it is. And every level up the ladder on the, at least on certainly on the management side, but I think also on the technical side, like junior to senior to lead, each one of those is less coding, more communication, less, a little less coding, more, even more communication and management and the personnel and the personal side. So yeah, you gotta work on those soft skills. Yeah. I, the, the way I, I like to think of it is, you're building a house. Uh, if you're a junior engineer, you're probably going to be in charge of painting a room. You know, right. self, self yes, contained. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you okay. make mistakes, someone else can fix it. You know, you're not going to do too bad no matter right. what you do. Yeah. Hopefully, you're not going to burn the house down, hopefully. Hopefully. You never know. <laughs> you never know. But as you get more and more responsibility, now you're watching, you're overseeing three rooms, four rooms, and eventually you move up to, say, architect. You have to be able to put the whole system together. Right. And naturally, that doesn't mean you're in there painting a room that's not the best use for your time. You're looking at how all these systems are coming together. And that's where you have to be able to communicate because people are at different levels, different right. skill sets, different focuses, and you have to be able to pull all that together and produce something. And that is, that's a challenge that you, you don't appreciate until you're much deeper into your career and you see like how complex systems are built. That just takes really good communication. Yeah. But getting out and starting as a junior is part of that process of learning how to communicate, you know, how to communicate your skill set effectively in an interview, how to communicate through resumes and through articles and, you know, all these. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do, do it early. To your point on, on GitHub, don't just make a GitHub and like, oh, here's a readme and, and markdown. And it's a quick, you know, put, put some flair into it. Give it a logo. Yeah. Add, add some copy to it. Add like a help, help page or quick start guide. Little things like that show you have the skills to move on to, to eventually become a more senior engineer, even if you're junior and all that builds up over time. So it's good to build that muscle when you're really early on. One of the questions that we got, um, from the viewers was around, how do you distinguish yourself? And I was thinking, let me just throw this by you. Like you, let's say you're doing Netflix and I'm, I'm going for Netflix or whatever. And there's an API that I can get to for Netflix. I mean, that would be a way that I would distinguish myself would be to necessarily like, if I want to get a front end gig there, maybe use that API, put something cool on it, you know, and that shows an investment in me wanting the gig, right. But also being able to adapt and learn and, and, and user technology, things like that would be a distinguishing way to kind of stand out. Yeah, absolutely. It's again, there, there's millions of software engineers in the United States, right. millions, millions more around the world. How do you stand out from that is you have to put in a little more effort. Uh, that's just the modern times where software engineering is more accessible, which is great, but that also means the market's a lot more crowded. So anything you can do to stand out in that way or, or demonstrate that you've went the extra mile to, to really work at this one particular company really helps you stand out. Of course, you, you know, we can't just shout out like advice and be like, this is what you should do. The trade-off there is you can't do that for every single application you put in because that's just no. not a, a good use of your time. Yeah. And that's, that's a tricky balance. You have to figure out how to strike. But with the ones you really want, I think you can kind of go that extra mile for, I think we all have like our, when we are going out interviewing or whatever, thinking about the next thing we want to do, you know, sort of a ranked order of like, oh, I'd really love to work there, you know, and, and <laughs> that's the one, you know, take that, take that extra beat and, you know, as you're watching Netflix, you know, hack away on some API <laughs> and see what you can build, you know, do something cool. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen some really cool projects that uh, make people stand out a little bit like a Chrome plugin or, or things like oh, that. Oh, yeah. That's, 
it's the beauty of the internet is you could kind of hack away on anything. If it's just a side project, you're not going to release right? it. And so many of these pro so many of these services now are free, like in terms of like getting, trying to get developers on board, they're like, Oh, we'll give you, you know, database access with, you know, 10,000 records for free. And you're like, cool, whatever done. I can host my old service <laughs> there. I can do the solopreneur thing, or I can go and make an interview project and, and really show up my skills. And you yeah, get to learn yeah. stuff as you're doing it too. You know, it's like, it's not like you're just, you know, cranking out version 15 of this, throw in some new technologies, throw in some things you saw, you know, and like experiment with that too. Yeah. And, and like in a, in a crowded market, that sort of thing helps out. Anything you, you can put out that shows you go the extra mile. It doesn't, just have to be, say, hacking on an API or something like that. Uh, I, I like coming back to your idea of writing a blog post or something like that. Something that shows you're more well-rounded than someone who takes instructions and spits out code. Uh, like real software engineering, as we know, is a lot more than that. So show that early on, show that kind of potential. And someone says like, oh, hey, you don't, you don't have the skills yet. I'll just be honest. But I'm willing to invest in you because... Yeah you invest in yourself. And right. that's really as a hiring manager, what I'm looking for in kind of that early stage talent. And another thing is don't let perfection be the enemy of getting out there and just doing stuff. Like, you know, if, if it's a, you know, a blog post on how to set up, you know, style X with Vite or something like that, you know, it could be 600 words, you know, and it's mostly code and it's mostly whatever. And it's like, Hey, I, you need this, blah, blah, blah. But if somebody's searching for it, and they're like, wow, that's cool. Okay, who's this guy? Uh, you know, who's this person? Oh, that. Oh, okay. Let me talk to them. See if they're interested in doing Stylex. And there you go. And I've, I've heard a lot of those stories as well. It's like, oh, I, I put out a blog on some um, semi-obscure technology that went non-obscure, that got a lot of pings. And suddenly I'm like, wow, you're the person for that. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Do you, it, I think... It, Coming into tech, it's easy to say like, oh, all the good stuff's been invented or all oh, the libraries no. have been made. And that is so, we are, I, I'm trying to think of where we are in, in technology, but we're, we're still in the caveman era where we oh, haven't even it. discovered the wheel yet. Right. Um, so the, the field is wide open. It may not look like that on, on the outset, but it's surprising how many tiny little utility libraries or tiny, just different ideas or approaches to solving a problem. Um, come up and become the next thing. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm just some, some woman who, who coded this up in my free time. And it turned out this was a good idea and people are using it and it just takes off. And that, that's still a hundred percent there. Um, and that's one thing I want everybody to take away is that there's so much innovation yet to be, to happen. And you can't be, like you said, think about perfection or someone's already built that go build it yourself. Uh, you'll, oh yeah. You might build it better. Absolutely. Learning stuff by kind of taking it apart and seeing how it works and making your own version. Oh my gosh. That that's that's fun. I love that stuff. You know, yeah, figuring out I, like yeah. oh, sorry. No, no, no. Okay. Well, but I'm figuring out like I, I I'll see some cool animation, you know, like, oh, these guys are doing like some liquid thing and it's super neat. And it's like, okay, kind of take the code, you know, rip it apart. Oh wow, cool. They're using some SVG stuff here. Cool, let's go. <laughs> I, I love that stuff. It's great. And then you write an article about it. Then and, and you're golden. You're good. Now you're the, the king or queen of SVG. Yeah, exactly. One of one of the coolest um, or most memorable take home exercises I, I gave to a candidate one time was uh, we gave him a take home exercise. You know, you build out some UI or something like that. It doesn't yeah. really matter. Um, but they built their own custom version of React. And Whoa! It wasn't. It wasn't like the bells and whistles and all the APIs and all the shininess. Yeah. But the principle of you know creating converting JavaScript into a to, into Markdown or yeah. not Markdown, HTML and having all the events and all that is actually nice. really simple. It's not too many lines of code. And it was cool. They just implemented that because they're like, just to demonstrate, they understand the core concepts. And that's the sort of thing that is easy to stand out in a, in a crowd and demonstrate that like, Hey, I'm not just a tutorial engineer. I'm someone who's gone my own path, made mistakes and come back with some lessons. And that's the kind of person you want to hire. Yeah. Absolutely. So I had, there's a great question about how, uh, so let's say that you get that interview. So let's talk about how, what, what stands out to you when somebody's working with you in the interview through the interview process? Like what are interactions that you see? Oh, wow. That's really good. Or, Ooh, geez, that's a red flag for me. I, uh, one thing I, I look for is did they do any research into 
the role or the company? Do right. they understand how we make money? Maybe yeah. our competitors are. That's it's really baseline stuff, but you'd be surprised the number of people that don't don't bother looking at that. Like what sort of stack do we use? What sort of technology? All that's easily accessible and it takes five minutes to look it up before an interview. Yeah. And if you don't know that, it shows up um, like, hey, how big is Netflix engineering? Blah, blah. Like it's stuff you can know. Um, so showing up prepared and having those sort of questions or having that kind of context and background really makes a difference. I'd also say, and this is very underrated, the questions you ask me or the interviewer at the end, they should always leave time for questions. Yes. It's really, really, really yes. important part. So and everybody true. skips over that. They're all yep. like code, 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 code. Oh, Jack, um, what do you like most about working at your job? Like that's right. The, you that's, know, that's or not a good one. Geez, I don't, I don't know. I don't have any questions. Like really, oh, really oh. none. <laughs> None. That, yeah. Yeah. You just, you're just, that's an opportunity you're just throwing out the door. Um, yeah. actually, yeah. I, I will say that the, the comment thread. So when I put it out there, hey, I'm talking to some hiring managers, you know, you want to get their in, input on stuff. A lot of the questions I got were very tactical, like, oh, how big is your engineering team? What tech stack do you use? Yada, yada, yada. Just go through that, that comment thread right there. Like half those questions are exactly the ones you want to ask, right? You know, how do you handle, how do you adapt to change? You know, when was the last time you did a tech change, you know, or a serious, you know, refactor and what was it, you know, whatever, you know, if you want to talk about that or talk about your, you know, the, the ladder, the progression ladder, there's so many things to ask. Yeah. I yeah. can't, it amazes me when people don't, don't avail themselves of that time. Yeah, it, it's surprising. And, and people won't ask these. I've seen people get through the entire interview process. Um, maybe they're really good, but ask poor questions. And then they start asking the, um, what's your engineering culture? Like, or what do you find most challenging about your engineering culture? Like, how does that promote success? What does growth look like? I'm like, you waited all the way to the end to, <laughs> to ask that. You could have done it a lot sooner. But yeah, ask good questions. Put some thought into it. Be thoughtful about it. Don't ask this. I mean, you can ask the same question to the same people uh, if you have multiple yeah. interviewing rounds. That's sure. That's fine, but don't make them all the same question because we do take notes and we do have a, we all see the entire interview and we know what you asked. And if you're asking the same questions, it's going to show up as like, maybe they're not as thoughtful as we thought because they didn't put that much time into it. Yeah. I got to say that advice to get some sort of prep to, to get ready for the company is so important. Yeah. And it is the first thing like in general, I would say the companies that I've worked at, our, our hiring process is primarily like hiring manager first. They're going to like just see if you're somebody that they want to trouble their engineers with talking to because their engineers are busy, you know, and they're going to take the hit of like whatever, you know, uh, or maybe it's the HR person or the, the recruiter, you know, whatever. Another person like we ask those kind of in, initial questions. And yeah, if you're not, if you're not like, oh, uh, you are such and such and such and such a company cool like i've never really heard of you before this was just to put on my calendar and i didn't even spend five minutes before the interview looking up your company that like that looks terrible it really looks bad it does it yeah. does and we can tell we can tell when you show up oh, not yeah. prepared you're in a hurry um you're not not in a quiet place all these little things like yeah we know you're busy we know life happens. everybody's busy yeah everybody's busy but we're we're making time to talk to you, uh, which costs the company money, which costs me time and, and effort. So, you know, I expect the same. But I, I would also say, like, for anybody, a hiring manager, anybody doing the interviews, you should give candidates that, too, because they're also taking their time. So, yeah, it, it's for sure. Respect. Yeah, I think when I get a whole bunch of interviews and I've got my initial filter, which you should probably talk about, too, you know, cool. what, what kind of filters there are there. But if I if you make the short list... I'm going to look into you too. I'm going to look at your GitHub. I'm going to, you know, just at least have some sort of look around to see what, you know, if you contributed any open source projects, things like that, just because, you know, I, it's a two way investment there. Yeah. Uh, and, and to add on that, this one's maybe a little more controversial. Like I'm going to look at your social media. I want to find out, especially if I'm serious about spending my time to interview you or hire you, I'm going to find out what kind of person you are. I want to see how you vibe with the team. Um, I won't say, you know, censor yourself on what you post, but be aware that other people, people that may look into you as a, as a person are going to look at what you post. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. You can 
Yeah. We're, we're... I've been surprised that I've, some people that I've seen have posted just some wild stuff. And you're like, whoa, if I'm a potential, like, unless you're independently wealthy, what are you posting this for? Because, like, if, <laughs> if an employer is going to look at this, it's going to be like, oh, my gosh, really? Yeah. I'm yeah, people... constantly surprised. People that, that engage in, say, non-productive debates on you know, Twitter or wherever, um, you know, like, it, is that the person you want to work with in, in the long run? Is that, like, someone who's going to be antagonistic and things like that? I, You should have an opinion. You should absolutely have an opinion about technology, but don't get dogmatic about it and don't, like, I don't know, cause drama and trouble because of that. I, I see that often, and I'm like, come on, kids, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> Who yeah, am I drama. Gonna hire the, the person who's loud and, and obnoxious on the internet or the person who's like more respectful in their communication. Yeah. And drama is a great way to get clicks and views and all that kind of sure. fun stuff. And that's great. You know, you want to have a, a million followers, sure, whatever. But at the same time, if you want to get a job, right, posting yeah. that, you know, really helpful medium article or really helpful, you know, gist to do something, that's that's value. That's you adding something into the community, being being a good member of the community. Yeah, um, exactly. And I, yeah. I tell you, Jack, I, I've got kids. I've got a team of people I manage. I don't want trauma. I really, <laughs> I really don't. I, I, I have enough of it in my life. Um, yes. So yes. like you said, it, it's cool to get clicks and followers and all that. But when you're looking for a job, just be cognizant of people are going to look who, look up who you are. And is that the person you want to reflect? That's, that's totally fine. Yeah. You know, and I, I did a video a while back, like nobody wins a workplace fight. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. The fact that you you caused the fight or the, that you engaged and try and didn't try and deescalate the fight, like nobody wins that. Like just yeah. just <laughs> not a good career. Spreads but... very yeah. very quickly if you're that type of person. Yeah, and it's worse for you because people won't engage with you. They won't give you like good constructive feedback to help you be better. Yeah, because they're like that person's not going to take it well. So I'm just not going to tell them. Yeah, and exactly. everybody else is going to be doing better because they're building on each other and helping each other out. And yeah. you'll be left behind with your, you know, own opinions, which, yeah, it, it, I've seen it before. And it's, just, it's so sad and detrimental. But uh, we're, we're, we're going off off track here. No, no, <laughs> but it's really good advice, though. So I, we, I did mention like filters on the yeah. on the on the resumes. Obviously, that's like step two is getting the resume in and in front of you. What, what are you looking for in terms of resume? Uh, resume, I look for a clear, concise, um, one thing I, I tell everybody is the list out the technologies you have. You don't have to list them like I use this, 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 in this particular role, but sprinkle it in and then put it in bold because that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I, my last role, I was looking for someone who had GraphQL expertise. So I'm looking, looking, for that resume, I'm looking for GraphQL, <laughs> Node, TypeScript, you know, really, yeah. really quickly. And if you're Java and C, you know, it, that's an easy filter for me. Uh, and the same goes for just putting in your resume somewhere, because uh, when I'm looking at a, a whole stack of resumes, say at a thousand resumes, I'm going to do keyword searches and mm -hmm. I'm going to just go to those people that talk about those technologies. So put the technology you put in there, make it, make it accessible, make it readable, make your resume readable. I, I really can't stress the... Uh, most people will never get the experience of sifting through a stack of resumes. I know you have Jack, but it doesn't matter how how flashy your, your resume is. You oh, know, that, that just... thing with like the the bars and stuff. Like I'm five yeah. bar Java. What is that? Even? What do you mean? Like is, is there a race to serve some sort of certification for that? Like yeah. what? <laughs> what does that Keep mean? It, 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 it's good to stand out a little bit, yeah. but not too much where it's distracting. Right. And where that line is, I don't know. It probably varies for everybody. But yeah, yeah, a little bit of personality in your resume is, is good. But readability, like emphasize readability. So we mean by that is don't make the text too dense. Um, don't make it multiple pages unless you have multiple pages of accolades or something like that. Right. Which, which you probably won't as a junior engineer. I mean, yeah. 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 I'm, not, I'm not scrolling usually. Like I go <laughs> to resumes and if it's like this long... I'm not scrolling. So if you really have to make it long, put the important information at the top. Um, yeah, I think we talk. Yeah, we talk about technologies, make it readable. Um, and if you want the gig, I would say you, you know, the, you're going to have the job rec and the job rec is going to say GraphQL, right? If I really want the gig at Netflix, I'm going to go and make sure that like 
I'm going to take my resume and I'm going to take out a bunch of stuff. And it's like kind of put that GraphQL stuff nice and high yes. and talk about how I'm, you know, I'm really into this. This is a big thing for me. Like I, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. Just invest that little bit and make your, I would say modularity in a resume is actually yeah. pretty good because you can just like hot swap in stuff. It's like, oh, I'm going for a Java gig. I'm just going to move up the Java stuff. So it's, you know, yeah. this gig. I'm going to go do that. Yeah. Jack, that is great advice. Yes. Tailor your resume for the role you're looking for. Don't, Spray, spray your resume. Um, like you said, if, if you're looking for a particular skill set or technology, put that in there at the top and emphasize that. Um, you don't have to use the same resume for every single role no. you apply to. Yeah, what uh, do they get? What, I'm, I'm going to look at your resumes across. You no, know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it's it's so simple and surprising, but it, the number of people that don't do it is, yeah. So look at the job rec. Look at your resume. Does your resume speak to that the the role? Uh, if not tweak your resume a little bit. Yeah. And if you're working with a recruiter and they say, Hey, you know, I've got a hiring manager over at so-and-so and are you interested? And you go, yeah, cool. Let me get, you know, give me the job rec and I'll take a look at it. And then I'll, I'll give you the resume that you're going to give to them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's not hard. You know, uh, just don't uh, like to work. Way. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it's really hard. I, I get it. It's hard if you've never been on the other side of the table. So, um, you know, where I think we're trying to share our wisdom here from looking at thousands being on the other side of the table. Yeah. Resumes, yeah. Uh, another one I hear often is Jim, I have a lot of, uh, accolades or skills or credentials, whatever, and I can't make it fit on my resume. Put it on your LinkedIn page. You, you okay. have like 20 cool open source projects, put them on your LinkedIn page, because if I want to know more about someone, I'm going to go there next because that is unlimited space. Essentially you can use, yeah. but do not feel or obligated to put it all on your resume because if it's too dense, I'm not, I'm just not scanning that far. Uh, I want to be a quick, quick, quick. Oh, interesting. Jack. Okay. Check your LinkedIn. Um, yeah. That's another one. I see such a big mistake is people don't put their, they don't fill out their, their roles. They just put like, here's my, my job and here's my title. That's it. It doesn't, they don't say anything about what you did. So take a minute, write a paragraph about what you're doing now. Some of the projects you've delivered, things like that. Because we, we do look at LinkedIn. You can have your own opinions about whether it's good or bad. But like the fact is it's the industry standard. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine with it. And I think actually it's becoming now that X is kind of, I don't know, that's a whole story there. But it's, it's always been like the more professional network. And yeah, the way that you conduct yourself, you really should go that extra mile of being super professional on LinkedIn. And when you're looking around for that job, you know, make sure that you're using every feature that you can get on whatever plane you've got, <laughs> you know, to make yourself stand out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the page to link out your, your GitHub, your, um, your blog posts, any videos you've made, things like that. It, throw it all in there. I, I want to see someone who's well, well-rounded. Those people stand out a lot more than I'm an engineer. I did this thing. Well, I can't tell your personality or anything like that. So, yeah. you know, give, give the hiring manager something to, to think about. One thing I think is often, I, and this is a little bit, tangential but as a hiring manager i just want people to know i want you to succeed i actually want this to work like i if you made it to where you're talking to me and i've got your resume and you've gone through all those filters and da 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 da, i want you to win i'm not there to poke holes in your balloon like so when it comes to like asking you questions and stuff i'm going to try to get the best that i can see out of you you know and and help you win just i just want people to know that i guess yeah, that that's wonderful perspective, and you're 100 percent right. We we have a million, especially as hiring managers, we have a million other things we could be doing at right. any moment, and we're taking the time to speak with you. We want you to show up your best possible self. We're not trying to antagonize you. We're not trying to not give you the role because if we weren't going to do that, we wouldn't talk to you. Right? Uh, exactly. You wouldn't have gotten this far. <laughs> I, I, I think it's it's easy to forget. Like it feels more. It can often feel more hostile or more. I don't know, uncomfortable, but the fact is we, we do want to get to know you because we took the time to talk to you. Something about you stood out. So show up your best self, let people know how to show up as your best self. Like, Hey, you know, I can't meet on Friday cause I've got kids or something like that. Everybody's that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. We're, right. we're fine with it. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't feel like you're, wow. You have a us. family. That's crazy. Yeah. Who does it, that? Exactly. <laughs> it, it, but like even keeping that in the back of your head, I think hopefully mentally calms people during the yeah. interview. It's like, yeah, slow down, take your time. Um, 
they want they want to see you show up as your best. And you know, if it's not it's not what they're looking for, it's not what we're looking for, but at least we know. And maybe we'll remember you in the future. That yeah. happens a lot more than people think is, you know, you're second or third place. Um, but I really like them. Uh, I've said this about candidates before. I'm like, yeah, another two years, three years. I, let's come back and talk to them uh, because they they have that trajectory that I know is going to make them successful. They just don't have the experience that I need yet. So all throughout that process, always make sure you show up your best self, even when, you know, things aren't going well. Yeah. And I would say I've always kind of engaged in trying – to get the hiring process to that point where I've been at companies where it's very, it's a lot more kind of, I don't know, leak Cody sort of that sort mm. of thing. And there was no opportunity given to the person to really show off. And so I'll, I'll come in and say, Hey, can we go and add something where it's like, you know, why don't you walk me through a project that you've done recently and, you know, walk me through the architecture and then we'll see about making some changes to it. And that gives them an opportunity to actually play on their home field. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I talk about this architecture all the time. It's my day job. So, you know, hopefully I can explain it. And, you know, you walk through stuff and, and that gives them, oh, OK, this is the this is the part where I can breathe and be myself a little bit as opposed to, you know, do tic-tac-toe and react for the 18,000th time or whatever. Yeah, it, it's hard. I, I think a lot of things we're describing are... Um a result of we put probably a little more thought and, and care into how we hire. Uh, I'm not going to pat our, we're patting ourselves on the back here, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's clear we, we dig a little deeper, but the, the fact is a lot of companies don't, the fact is a lot of companies maybe don't care at that level. So it is elite code type or hacker rank or that type of question. It is what it is. Um, yeah, but that tells you a little bit, I would say, on the other side as to maybe this isn't the company that I want to work for. You know, they're not going to invest in me or something. Maybe there's some tea leaves to read into that. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I, I can't cast judgment on those companies because maybe you're hiring 500 engineers. And, you know, it's just not yeah. scalable to do it any other way. That's that's fine, too. But it, it's important when you do have those initial calls with the recruiter or hiring manager, just like ask them what the interview is. Uh, mm -hmm. If they're like, well, it's uh, a couple of hard CS problems and a leak code problem. I don't know. Maybe you're, you're like, you know, I'm not feeling that you could find another role. Or maybe that's the sort of challenge you like. That's that's totally fine. Um, you, you could get both, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, the coolest one I've heard recently is like the, this a la carte menu of options. It's like, oh, if you want to do a take home test, you can do that. If you want to do an in-person test, you can do that. And, you know, it was just like. And that allows a person to like kind of play to their strengths. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, take home person or whatever, you know, we, oh, uh, a nice, nice, uh, nice fact. Yeah. We, we, uh, I tried that before. Uh, I did, it was like, Hey, you want to do a one hour phone screen or something like that? Or do you want to do a take home? And, you know, I want to make sure you show up your best self. And so yeah. a lot of people prefer to take home. That's, that's how you code in real life. You have time. There's no one sweating you. Um, some people are like, I just want to get it done. Uh, and I, I think I do pretty well in the life code exercise. So sometimes it's not an option. We we try to give people that flexibility, but generally you're always going to get a take home of some sort. That that's the way I think a lot of companies should do it because it takes more time, but it allows you to to show up and understand and be able to walk through the code that you wrote, which is a much more natural process. Yeah, I I, I do think maybe there should be some caps though on the amount, like the size of a take home test. I've heard some just crazy things like three day take home test. You're like, what? Like, come on. It's ridiculous. Really? It should be four, five hours. Yeah. Max. max. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which even that is a lot, but I, I, it'd be pretty hard to get a signal with anything less than that. Um, yeah. A page, a couple pages, you know, kind of a, whatever, you know, something, shows someone an understanding of like data flow and our application architecture, whatever you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'd say you're fortunate if you make it to the take home stage. Mm. Um, when we talk about filters. So sometimes the hiring manager talking to you directly as like the first point of contact. Sometimes it's a recruiter or a, a talent partner talking to you. What's important is you have your, uh, your spiel down your elevator pitch about who you are, Ooh, the projects like you that. work on. Yeah. Um, Bonus points are just like, hey, here's the ways I want to grow. Here's the ways I'm developing myself, things like that. Uh, remember, you're if you're talking to especially a recruiter, they talk to thousands and thousands and thousands of people. It is their job to talk to people. They don't know you. They don't care about you. It's not personal. Um, so they really don't. Yeah. Get it, it's a get numbers it down. Game. Yeah, it is a numbers game. So get your get your pitch down well. Practice it. 
rehearse yourself in the shower, uh, whatever you have to do, but be able to talk about the work you've done, some of the challenges you've overcome, um, things you're looking for in a role, like that should all be just second nature to you. Uh, so that when you get it out there, it's quick, it's easy. And this person says, Hey, this person's a great communicator, or they've put thought into kind of who they are and they're self-reflective. All that shows up well. And that's how you make it to the next stage. If you don't, if you're like, uh, yeah, I did this project. Uh, what did we do again? Was it react or was it <laughs> angular? I don't really remember now, but it was pretty cool. Um, uh, you know, like, yeah, yeah to, again, put yourself on the other side of that table and they're like, I don't, I'm not going to remember that person. They, they don't even know what they, they worked on. Yeah. And, and to that point of research, right. Why are you excited about this company, this yeah. opportunity? And why do you think yeah. you'd be a good fit for this role at this company? Those are the two things you should be able to just bang. Oh, I really want to work here. Cause I've always loved your stuff. Yes. It's great. I've used it my, you know, in, project before and i really think that i could add some value here and i think this role is going to be fantastic for that and i can see myself growing and blah 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 blah, 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 blah. yeah this this way or that way yeah gotta have that gotta have that i would say yes. that almost as more like yeah as important as the other stuff of like knowing your background that that's fantastic advice jack yeah be able to speak to the role uh speak if they call out something particular in the the job rec or the the posting for the role Talk to that, like speak a sentence like, oh, yeah, I really saw um, there's a lot of intersections between the, the data and UI side. And that's something I'm really passionate about. Right. Like that right there will put you in the 90 percent of or the 10 percent of people um, if you can speak directly to the role, because it shows, again, you put some thought into it. You exactly. put a little bit of effort, a little bit more than everybody else. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, then you, and you should. I mean, I don't I mean, maybe it's just me, but I don't spray and pray my resume around. I, I'm either talking with people that are referring me to a company and I want to make them look good or whatever. I, you know, maybe I've only got, you know, two or three in flight at a time. So I should know like everything about whatever each of those three roles. It's only three things, right? I mean, not hard. Yeah. The, I, I'd say it's good to remember the person on the other side, probably a recruiter or, or hiring manager, they're taking notes about who you are. Um, whatever way they, they do it, they have to take notes. So if you can make that really easy for them, like bullet points of, yeah, I, I worked on this company for these years. Here's the role I had. I grew into this role. Here's some of the projects that I, I worked on. Here's some of the technology, stuff like that. And you give people, make it really easy to give notes. That's little stuff that just makes it, it makes you stand out a little bit more than yeah. someone trying to parse like, well, he told a 20 minute story about something, but I don't remember what it was about. <laughs> and, and for a junior engineer, I would say, you know, if you were the if you were at a boot camp or you were in CS and you had a you know finals project or whatever it is, and you were the lead, you were you were kind of acted as the lead of the team or whatever. You took took leadership over this or that, the other thing. Like you know, say that right. Say that like yeah. take take ownership of those accomplishments, even if they're I don't know, just just in a boot camp or whatever. To say, hey, I, you know, I made sure that we got it done or that, the you know, that it was type safe from end to end or whatever you really took, you know, a hold of, you know, talk about how you sort of led that charge. Yeah. I, again, great advice, Jack. I, show me, show me you've led something. Show me you are a leader. You've driven something or you had an idea and you, you helped execute it or show me something a little bit different than. I can take instructions and I can write code. That's everybody. <laughs> you know, if you're a software engineer, you, exactly. everybody can do that. I um, can close Jira's boss. Yes. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. If you want to stand out, it's like, you know, I was head of the the ACM or, um, Oh yeah. You know, I, I organize this meetup group and I help mentor other people or all these little other things would may seem superfluous to coding are really what makes a good software engineer. And that's the things we're looking for. And that's something you can do as a junior engineer is like start leading projects, start showing up to things and demonstrate that and be able to speak to it. Uh, even if it's not a professional capacity. Yeah. And if it's a little bit bigger than a, like a five person startup, you know, these kind of mid-sized to larger companies, certainly big, big companies I've worked at like Nike and Walmart and big companies like that, you know, they're always looking to get community outreach anyway. And so if you're out there saying I was part of the ACM or it was part of, you know, women who code or, you know, these sort of, you know, these 
kind of things. That's fantastic. I mean, that's, that's a huge value add. And you're also saying that you have this community presence out there. You could potentially get some more referrals, make it easier on us to hire. And those things all look great. Yeah. The, the main takeaway here is it's not just about coding. Mm. Uh, you could say like, I'm a great software engineer. I know to code. I, I know the API is backwards and forward. I'm like, cool. Um, maybe that's important. Maybe it's not, but Maybe we'll, and we'll dig into that later uh, in the interview, but for now that just getting past that initial filter, I want to know much more about you and I want to know like who you are as an individual and yeah, where those you people headed. that have, a, yeah, exactly. I, I'm making a bet on you, especially as a junior, I'm making a bet that you will grow more because when you start, especially if you have no experience, you're going to be a net negative to me and the team because mm -hmm. we have to take our time to ramp you up. So what makes you worthwhile of that investment versus someone else? Uh, it's just like business. You know, you, you've got your 401k, you got your, what you invest in Robinhood or something like that. How do you pick which stock to invest in? You know, which one's going to grow more? And this is the same thing for hiring. Who's going to grow into this role? Who can, who can I say like, that was a good hire five years ago? Cause they've really made an impact that, and that's the sort of thing. Like you have to demonstrate through your resume, through that, their extracurricular activities, through your leadership. All that comes into play, um, not just your coding ability. You know, and, and going back to your point, which is excellent before, about how the social media stuff, and it, okay, sure, it may be controversial, but at the same time, there's only so much signal that we have for you, given that you're a junior engineer. There's maybe one, two projects you've got in GitHub. There's maybe, there's whatever your transcript is from your boot camp or CS or, or your college. And then there's, your LinkedIn and your Twitter, you know, or whatever. And if you're, if you're out there causing a ruckus, right. And, and the other person's out there talking about how they're doing this ACM stuff and really encouraging people to get to the meetup and all that sort of stuff. That looks, that's good signal. The, the, you know, the causing a ruckus, that's not great signal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, the boring stuff is the stuff that sells, uh, or it, it doesn't yeah. sell. Well, well, yeah, um, but that's I, the stuff that makes business work. Right, right, yeah. But I can I, I look back at you on LinkedIn, and LinkedIn, I, it shouldn't really have much of the spicy stuff, hopefully, you know? You try not to. Um, yeah. People can be short-sighted sometimes. But, <laughs> oh, God, uh, I, don't, you know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I like what you said about um, we only have so much signal, and we're only going to go deep. We're not going to go super deep into your YouTube channel, probably. Um, and part of that signal is when you actually, if you get the, the chance to talk to somebody, one, remembering they are taking time to speak with you, make it worthwhile. Like this yeah. is your, this is your moment. There's a million other things they could be doing. Um, they're talking to you. So, you know, be show prepared, prepared show per respectful. But the other one uh, there, especially as a junior with no real projects under your belt is, that's your chance to demonstrate your passion. Um, I get really excited about technology. I, I coded my free time. I, I did this project. Um, I really want to grow or this person is my inspiration. And, you know, oh, yeah. that's something you can bring right there. Easy. It doesn't take a lot of work. Like demonstrate that you're hungry. You, you want to you wanna become a software engineer and you're not just doing this for the money. There's a lot more to it than that. And that's, that's the way you can show up super easily. Yeah. And you want to be a software engineer and you want to be a software engineer there yes. at your company, because yes. this is meaningful to me. And that's why I'm taking this super seriously. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And thank, and by the way, thank you so much for ha talking to me. It's a real yeah. honor and privilege to be here. And after we're done talking, I'm going to send you a little email and say, thank you. That was really wonderful. Yes. Thank you for spending your time. Yeah, These things, it's the little things. It's the little things that take a minute two minutes, those little micro interactions and just showing that you're a positive person and you, you'll be a value add, a net value add, not just to the code. Sure. Fine. I mean, me as a junior, junior engineer, maybe not even then, <laughs> whatever, you know, but also to the team morale and spirit, you're going to bring some sparks, mm -hmm. some energy and, and, and kind of, you know, your unique, add your unique flavor to the team. Yeah. You, at the end of the day, you're selling yourself. Yeah. Like, sure. And that's how you have to approach it is someone wants to buy. Uh, they have a lot of choices to choose from. Why should they choose you? Right. Um, and I know when I was younger, I kind of bristled against that. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm a good coder. Why do I have to sell myself? They should, yeah. they should be lucky to hire me. Um, but now that I'm older and I have more perspective, thankfully, uh, you know, I, I realize 
you have to be humble about it. You have to be, even the be, the best coders I know are really humble about it. Like they don't talk about like, oh, you know, blah, 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 or create really clever solutions. Like they're super humble. Um, they're confident in their abilities. They have opinions that are well-established or well-founded at least. And they show up really, they show up in a way that I'm like, okay, yeah, this is someone that like, I feel like could disagree with me, but we come out to the better solution at the end. Um, and in all that, the, those little, those little interactions on like how you show up online, how you show up the, in the questions, um, how prepared you are, your passion, you demonstrate is your resume just got a little bit, something extra that makes you stand out. Like all these are signals that I want to buy or you're, that you're selling <laughs> yeah. yourself. I, I wouldn't say I want to buy you because that, that sounds wrong, but, that sounds, yeah, uh, but, yeah. but that's how you have to purchase. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, this has been super helpful. Thank you so much for spending your time with us and, and, and giving your insights into this. Thanks for having me on, Jack. Uh, and hopefully we didn't go too far in the rambly course about social media and all that. But uh, I had a, it was a great conversation. Yeah, it really has been. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that talk with Jem Young. I know I did. I had a lot of fun and learned a lot, but I'm sure you have questions. So put those in the comments right down below. Let's get the conversation started about how we can improve our chances of getting our tech jobs. In the meantime, of course, if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.